never do it. <laughs> One of the things that I have not figured out in Printalo, and maybe it's just because I haven't figured it out yet, but things can have multiple statuses. So how do you cause one status to trigger the next status if they have multiple points? So Ryan approved it, Yep. okay, but at that point we need the art to be done, we need the goods to be ordered, and you know, so do they have to do one before the other one? Is there a way to do multiples? Um, no, so they, it is consecutively, right? So like in statuses, you can't have two of the same status, right? Like you can't have two statuses at the same time. But for me, like order approval is very linear. Art and ordering apparel are not. They're in parallel. Does everyone feel the same? So really the task is how do you map that out in Printavo? How do you mount that up right now? The way I do it is I use tasks. So we use tasks. Hit the button where? In Printavo tasks. Task, okay. Task. So under preset task list, you can create all these tasks. You can create whatever. So we do artwork, we keep that in the colors, and then we do tasks for ordering. So he could say, I've ordered the goods and I've checked in the goods. My Printavo is going to be different than your Printavo and your Printavo. And that open source flexibility, we should look at as an advantage rather than a disadvantage because a different decorator might have a completely different workflow. And the problem is, and I've tried every software, so Shopworks, Deco Network, you name it. And the problem that I had was they were so rigid in their way that they wanted me to work that it just didn't work for my shop's personality. Because I said, one of my business partners wants everything printed out. You know, like, so we built a button for print out. My business partner who's been doing this since he was 16 and he's 55 now says, this has changed the way I do things, you know. So we don't use the purchase order to actually order. We use the purchase order <coughs> function for receiving only. So you use it for receiving. It so consolidates everything into one sheet for every order that's available for receiving on that order that we did the day previous. Gotcha. And like I said earlier, like you automate with people and technology. So like push a button, print out a order, Tom orders, Tom order pushes a button. You see what I'm saying? But there's it's not any good. word that you're aggregating, except yeah. manually. Yeah, we just do it manually. Well, yeah. and we're running 200 tickets a week, and there's one guy that's pulling and ordering. So, he does it pretty good. I think what you need to do, though, on the automation, like what we have, if a customer approves it, yeah. it automatically goes to my person that orders it, and then tells her to, the order's been approved, right. order the goods, and then she creates the PO and orders it right then. So you have status changes. Status changes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We click print out work order for him, and he should have probably clicked apparel order. Now, if I go to his desk, I know that he's got a little highlighter and he hit that. Are we getting better at it? Yeah, we're getting better at it. But there's a button there for Tom to hit apparel order, and um, you know I don't really have anything for check in because he checks in manually still. That's just like his way of doing it. But my guys on press, I have them hit press check front and press check back, and that's their way of saying, hey, how does the job look? Where do you set up your preset tasks? So I I have, I th where do you set up your preset tasks? Uh, preset tasks. I, I know I have three of them in there. I just don't know how they got in. So you go, <laughs> into, you go into your settings, and then preset task list. Okay. And then you can have different sets of preset tasks. So this is our general task list for general orders. DTG is weird because I sub it out. So that's a completely different workflow. So with the DTG order, I ask that look at the first thing up there. Make sure garments are 100% cotton. Yeah. Okay, that's a funny thing, but like Matt is assigned that role, and he has to do that every time because I hate getting poly blends, and I'm not DTGing them, right? So that's the first thing he checks because he's made that mistake so many times. And then he checks his fonts, and then he checks his turnaround because I'm subbing it out, and he slammed me before. Is there anywhere that you can go in and and make it uh, this part of it automated that it's not done to remind you? Um, uh, there are task reminders, right? So in under my account, there is a way to say send task reminders to users. So if you assign tasks to specific users, they can get their task list sent to them every day. Some people use it. I use it for a couple employees, but not everyone. I think the one thing that I would recommend to every single person is make sure every user in your shop is on Printavo and has their own account because you have unlimited users. And that's one thing we should take advantage of. And if you're not on premium yet, I think Middle offers unlimited users, 150 bucks a month or something like that. Get it, it'll just save your life. Like it's worth it. But the fact of the matter is, like everyone's on the same page. 
so that we can all work independently but together. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, shifting gears, just no ask problem. a non pentago question. One of the things you had talked about was, um, you know, before you grew your business, um, you're 100% you're focused because you were like out the gate ready to start. Like you wanted a bigger place, you wanted everything. Like you have big yeah. ambitions and your family was kind of like, mm, calm down. My business me. partners. My dad was Are, like, what'd you get yourself into? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, so you had some things you had to kind of take care of and a lot of that was automation. My question is, you had mentioned um, you would outsource someone to look at your costs actually from the websites and then look at and then input that into Printavo, which gave you a report. Like that for me blew my mind because that's like, you know when you do your big list mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, okay, if I get everything done, like I'm going to really start working on this today and it doesn't happen. And that just sounds like. Yeah. So like one of those stupid, like those tasks was like, I want to track my expenses to a T, mm -hmm. not so I can audit them. I just want to know. Like, I just want to know, what is my true cost of goods sold? This is our Slack channel right now, and it's really, it's fun. Who here uses Slack? Mostly the kids use this, but, like, this is for me and my, like, bookkeeping team. You know, and so in here, I have freelancers. And if you go on Upwork, we'll see if they're still in here. But, like, I'm developing something right now, so I have my developers in this channel, and we're communicating just on this. Um, and so if we look at this thing called Upwork, has anyone used Upwork before? So Upwork is a tool where you can hire freelancers similar to like Fiverr. So if you go on Upwork, you can just say, I'm looking for someone to help me with basic bookkeeping, and I'm only willing to spend 20 bucks a, a week, an hour, a month, and you can post a job that says, I just need someone to track my expenses. Looks like Upwork is down. <laughs> That's really weird. Um, There's Elance too. Elance got bought by Upwork. Yeah. But you could just say like on Fiverr, you could just say like <coughs> accounting, you know, and you could find someone on there to just do, you know, I will manage and grow your Pinterest account. That's weird. Um, account, but you could say book, you know, bookkeeping. It just sounded really specific. Like yeah. For you, like you said, they went to the SNS website and took that information. So, and went so to this is the task that they did. I should find the video. I will do bookkeeping for you. So I hired like a person just like this. And all they did was they would go on Printavo, they would pick an invoice, and we do this a little differently now. I actually did this a couple of years ago. Um, but they would go into payments and expenses, and they knew a Gildan 5250 cost, I don't know, $2. So they would actually find the exact amount, and they would say, we spent $232 there on cost of goods sold, and you could say it was from SNS Activewear. SNS now has live pricing, so your actual pricing. Are you putting TNM in there too? Materials. Um, no. I really just like to know my cost of goods sold because what I like to say is like there's fixed costs and variable costs. I know that my full-time staff will have to be there no matter what, whether I'm printing or not. And so I have my fixed costs as what would it take to keep the business running without printing a single shirt, but having everyone there. And then my variable cost, and so like I'm going to need every color of ink. I'm going to have to stock my ink racks. Like I'm going to have to have staff there. I'm going to have to pay the rent, the electricity, the phone bill, all that. And then my variable costs are things that just can fluctuate. I took a cross section of ink and what we spent on ink, and it kind of went up like 5 or 10% every year based on our supply or based on our growth. And so I keep that as a fixed cost because I know no matter what, I'm going to have to have all the Will Flex inks. Um, as far as time goes, Time is really, really tough because you can see a job, a 200 piece job take two hours and you can see it take four or five hours. I'm not there yet to track it as hard because we physically didn't have the space to do it and our situation up in our shop was a shit show. Uh, we literally like we busted a wall, a wall down through our back of our building to bring shirts up on the forklift. Like we had no space so I wasn't there to start measuring time as much. In our new facility, the implementation that I will make is a start and stop button on Printavo. Reorder film on file, that's when the job's about to go to press. I'll make a button that says press start, and then I will make a, a button that says job finish. And it's gonna be up to that employee to hit start and stop, and then when you go down at the bottom, you'll have a timestamp of it. And that's how I'm gonna track it for now. That's my plan going forward. And they're just doing that from their phone. They're doing that from, so what I have are Google Chromebook PCs. Has anyone used those before? Yeah. These are incredible. They're like 200 bucks, and you can buy them on Amazon. Here they are. 
Um, and all they run is Google Chrome and basic Chrome extensions. And then you can hook them up to a desktop or a, just a screen. You can have them everywhere. So in production, they just all log into the production account. Um, and that's kind of how we do it with, with those Chromebooks. I just actually bought like four of them. Why did you like that better than just a tablet? Um, I like having a PC. I don't know. My guys like being able to use a mouse and a keyboard. And so I have this wall mount thing where it's literally like if you go to like a, a hospital and the nurse's station, they've got like a screen connected to the wall and like it'll, it'll pull out and in a little bit. I just have them up everywhere. I've seen Mike, you have it mounted to your. I door. just literally put it on top of the dryer. You put it on top of the dryer. <laughs> we wrap it in saran wrap, get it dirty, ruin it, whatever, just use it. Um, and then the QR code reader is awesome. So you can use either a scanner or your phones, but uh, it just eliminates, like, it's fun for the guys. They, they enjoy, like, scanning the job in, um, and then it pulls up on their screen, and it's a little more legit. Is each person logged into one of those Chromebooks? So, um, so actually, I just have one account for production. Okay. So there's production. Um, each artist has their own account because okay. they're kind of sending a lot of messages. But guys that are in production do. But we do have a schedule that says who's going to be printing what. Okay. So I know, you know, Johnny's printing 5408. You know, so I can really go back and look. Um, and they work as a team together. So um, when they do their press checks, that's an accountability system for them personally. We have this rule that you have to have a second set of eyes on anything you do. So you go ahead and you print your first shirt, just hold it up to someone and say, what do you think? Spell wrong, is my print straight? And just like click the button that says press, press check, just so you know like I've looked at it because we trick ourselves. I'm sure you guys have had plenty of tricks. So what else? I'm interested to see how you have the Zapier and the forms built into Printable, something we've never yeah, let's log into that before. Um, so Zapier was really intimidating for me to start. Yeah. <laughs> Just start. Just try it. You can't mess anything up like that badly. Um, <laughs> no, really, like I was super intimidated to start. You guys want to see a Zap put together? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's let's link a couple things together. Let's take. Um, and Jot Forms, so you know, is just a form builder. That's the one that I use. You can use web forms, Google Forms, whatever. When someone goes to my website, this is what happens. So we want to find Jot Form, and we want to link it to. Come on now. So what do we want to integrate it with? Explore Jot Form, and let's find it with. My internet's kind of... Come on. Has anyone... Uh, so Shelby, you do it or no? Yes, sir. Explore Printavo on Zapier. So Bruce has built his API to be flexible with all these different softwares. And so you can say popular Zaps, connect this app to this app. So save new job form responses. Let's do job form with... And let's, yeah. when you get a new customer, let's create a quote. Right? So now it goes into Printavo and it does that. So when I get a new customer on JotForm, let's create a new customer in Printavo. Okay? And so you would make those zaps and then you would just test it. So those, jot, those drop downs auto generate from the individual app, so yeah. I'll see my tasks. You'll literally right. see all of them, right, right, right. Okay, so you can scary. test them, and then you can say, after we create it in Printavo, why don't we um, add it to our MailChimp, right? Because we want to add a subscriber, or you could find a subscriber and send them a message. Um, there's that right there. So now they're in my MailChimp, and when we're done, and I could do more there. And let's send a message in Slack, uh, send a direct message to um, me. There's my Slack account. And let's send it to uh, let's send it to Stephen. And let's say you have a new customer. So you see how I did that? Now when this happens, it'll all we've created this little zap, right? Like 50 bucks. I don't know, it's probably like 20 bucks a month, I think, is what it is. I think the first three are free. Yeah. The first three is, oh, okay, yeah. 
we've kind of gone past that, so we. <laughs> <laughs> so that is that gave that's on your landed page whenever you collect the data, and then yeah. So, like, and then so how do you? Yeah, I was going to ask for you. Yeah, how do you import that into the form. form? So here's job form. Um, there's job form. It's really clean to use. Um, and so this is just a form I build. I built on job form. And you can, you know, pick an organization, put your phone number in there, um, and then this will now populate into Printavo. When do you need your? So these are specific questions that I might ask. Are you looking for apparel? You know, describe what you want. So this helps limit some of the back and forth emails. Oh yeah, so uh, great order entry form. And then upload your files. Yeah. So when the uploads, are, you know, in Printavo, there's not there's not a way necessarily to, to connect the file to the customer <laughs> yet. So it just goes into Gmail. So then when we interact with the customer, we just make the link manually. But now we have artwork, we have PNGs, we have something, and we know when their event is, if they're a good lead or not. I need 11 pieces, 16 colors. Like, you know, uh, trying to start trying to start a clothing brand, like okay. Uh, but we know, like, I know the severity of it and the seriousness of it. So I actually have Jot Form connected to my Slack account too, because the last thing I want is us to snooze on someone coming to our website. So I'm a hawk, and my staff knows, like, oh shoot, I need to call them. That's 2,000 pieces for the university. So I call them right away. You know, versus hey, just send them an email. What's the difference between that form there and the start your order button that you have? That's exactly the same thing. It takes you to that. Yep. Yep. So, start so that's your, the first thing that you see when you go to your website? First thing you see when you go to your website is this. Um, and you can just hit start your order or start your order. I haven't perfected this yet um, by any means. And this is Shopify? This is Squarespace. Squarespace. Yeah. yeah. Um, this right here is our quilt of all of our student designs. And I have a freelancer that uh, just takes all of their proofs and puts them in these little nice thumbnails. And then we just keep populating that on our site or we put it on our Instagram. But like people ask about my students' designs, like they're pretty solid. The website, actually Bruce helped me kind of map out a strong website and he just said it needs to have a really good call to action, yep. it needs to have really good social proof, and it needs to be a click funnel as quickly as possible. Right? Do you, you guys ask your clients to put their stuff on the website? Um, like, you got permission for the Instagram like ones? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're usually pretty nice about it, and you know, if anyone, because we don't do a lot of contract work, okay, yeah. um, we're printing for frats and sororities, so, uh, but you know, their items are licensed and sometimes <laughs> sensitive, so we ask, and then something really strong to do on your site is to do testimonials. Um, I don't know who does it or not, but do you have a way to automate to Instagram? What? Um, just your maybe like scheduled posts and things like that. So Instagram is really tough for scheduling. I don't know if anyone struggle with that or not. So Instagram for us, um, we use it a ton, but no, it is still pretty manually done. What I do have is someone just preparing content for me. So my artist every Friday has to do like 20 prints from that week that are just Instagram ready. Right. Our media intern just needs to have like three or four pictures in the hopper mm -hmm. for next week's post. We started using um, Later, okay, which I think is maybe ten dollars for business or something. Yeah, you can schedule out as much as you need. And it gives you the hot spots. The problem that we're running into, um, we're trying to utilize stories more for like more engagement, stay on top of people's feeds. Um, you can schedule your posts in Instagram to show up in your feed. Mm -hmm. Can't do videos. You can do photos, but you check um, out plan only. What is it? Plan only. Okay. We um, use Agora Pulse for what? Um, for all of our scheduling, and it auto posts to Instagram. You can do yeah. it on your platform. Instagram should be pretty organic. Yeah. Rockford Art Deli does a really good job, and I know they've got like their Fridays are for the uh, community days or whatever. Or what do they call it? Oh, we have free print days on. Free print days. Holidays, yeah. But, I mean, if you're not on Instagram yet, you got, like everyone's migrating to Instagram for like good organic content. Like Brett does a really good job from printed threads. Um, Adam, who is one of my kind of counterparts that does all this, he runs Instagram pages for a living. And if you guys have heard of Barstool Sports, we do a lot of their printing because he just messages them. So this is a stupid page he started in college. He has 5,000 Sigma Chi's from across the country that just follow his page. And he posts the most random things, maybe some pictures you know, from college, and then things that he's selling. And he has a cult following. 
um, and he's getting a thousand likes on a page with five thousand followers. His brother actually owns Foxtrot in Chicago. I wish he was here, but he is crazy on Instagram. But he's constantly like interacting with people, asking questions, and it doesn't have to be really, really nice content. It just needs to be cool stuff that's going on that people want to engage with. You should see Printavo's Instagrams changed quite a bit over the last six months. If you've noticed, Bruce is really, and, and Bridget, you've probably seen yeah. that, but Bruce is like engaging with people, asking questions, having fun, live printing, live this, live that. Um, so Instagram for us, I still like to keep control of it. I haven't totally automated it yet because that's what we're trying to get our brand out with. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Do you use uh, messaging? In Printable, or do you because you're using Gmail to automate? So are you using actually on the work order invoice? Are you using yeah. messages in there? We try to use the messages as much as we okay. can. It'll mask it through Gmail or not. If they can use messages, it's better. But the people that do the messages have their Gmail tab open at the same time. Right. So I'd rather them use Printable messaging because it keeps a better record of it. But if they don't, it's not the end of the world. Do you mean messaging customers? Yeah, you can message customers on Printable. Yeah. Do you have any trouble with emails getting bounced back, especially with like a school email account domain? We have a lot of trouble with it. You can check the statuses in my account for bounce emails. Oh, using printable messages? Yeah. I think they've tweaked it. Oh, really? We'll have yeah. people reach out because they never got it. Because oh. the only way yep. we do it is that's how we send you our invoices. So when I go to follow yep. up on yeah. a payment, yeah. I'll see. Yeah. And so that's why we like to do it through printable. <coughs> yeah. It's tough. I mean, email is just really hard because, like, what's happening with the world right now in email? Like, Gmail is getting smarter and smarter to filter things out. So anything that's automated is it's going to be tough. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, I sent out 100 invoices and I had issues with, like, two of them. I'd rather just deal with those two than try to flip the whole system for those 100 because I'm not there yet, if that makes sense. Are you using text messaging? Yes. I use text messaging heavily for proof approvals and proposal approval. So <coughs> link that through Trello? That's through Trello, yeah. So Trello is the app that you use for texting. And I don't do it to actually send the proof. I let the customer know you should go to their computer to see the proof. So they're not just like, oh, that's good. I will use the text tool, and especially with students, like instant approvals. Yep. Steve, can you show your automation on how you do your quote and your text and statuses? Yeah, so um, order gets placed. We call it proposal. We don't say quote or order. Everything's a proposal until it's actually running. Right? And this is like a change that I made because someone calls in and says I need a quote for 100 shirts and they don't give you sizes. Or someone says I need 25 large, 25 medium, 25 small, and you just give them a proposal for 75 or 100 pieces or whatever. So until their order is, sizes are in and everything's nailed down, it's a proposal. And a proposal can have many different, you know, it could just be a, a rough number. It could be like nailed down in detail. Um, but once the proposal goes through, then we go into processing the work order and everything. But like I said, a quote can, and a proposal can be the same thing because there's just different things that customers need. They might not even have artwork yet, or they might be sending you perfect artwork with perfect sizes. It's still a proposal until it's approved. It's just a matter of what level. It's you have in. your statuses automated, right? So if you click on, you change the status, it automatically texts or emails them? Yeah, so I have it set up as email or text. Proposal. Yeah, yeah, so I set up two. And so I'll say proposal out for email first, and then I'll fire text right after it. Yeah.